What's up, guys? Coach Gaglione here. This is another edition of the Powerlifting People podcast. We got one of our standout members here today, Ed. How you doing? Good. So uh, we're going to kind of dive in, you know, here and there. I'm trying to do a little bit more kind of interviews with some of our members that have been kind of training with us for a while. You know, Ed's, a, you know, for people that are watching this on video, you may see this, but if you're just listening on the podcast, um, Ed's a lightweight lifter. He just competes in 123, 132 weight class, but I want to kind of uh, let him kind of take the floor. So how did you kind of first kind of get into lifting and, you know, and then you can kind of maybe talk about how that you know, you transition to, you know, kind of joining our gym and then actually kind of, you know, doing competitions. Yeah. So I started like lifting here and there in high school. Like I would lift during the school year and then, um, during the summers I wouldn't work out at all, but, uh, I, w I was always doing like mostly like bodybuilding stuff. And then like in college, I started to like take working out a little bit more seriously and uh, I started staying consistent with it. And around, around like a year, like around two, two or three years ago, I would say um, I started wanting to focus more on strength. And um, so I started like just, trying to transition over from to like more strength-based workouts and and less bodybuilding stuff and 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 staying um like and like a, my, my strategy was always just like staying like a low low rep range and lift heavy and I was always like curious on like what kind of coaching was like available in my area if there were any powerlifting gyms in my area and like one day I just like looked it up and I saw I saw the gym here in Farmingdale and I was like, Oh, that's like literally a 10 minute drive away from me. That's so convenient. But I actually didn't sign up and I didn't like, I just kept it in the back of my mind and I had it in the back of my mind for like maybe a year after that. And one day I was actually watching a Larry wheels video and, um, you were in that video and he was like, Oh, my coach, uh, John Gaglione. And I was like, that sounds so familiar. Like, why does that sound familiar? And then I Googled it. And I was like, Oh wait, that's the gym I was looking at. That's like 10 minutes away. That, that's like, that's crazy. I was like, Oh, that's, that's, that's really interesting. And maybe a couple months ago after that, I saw you posted something about like, uh, like new members or something like that. And I, I was uh, really curious if if you had um, strict curl training. So I, I just messaged you about that. And you were like, yeah, come in. So that's how I got started at uh, at the gym. Yeah, I think it's kind of funny. Sometimes people um, may not put two and two together, you know, with, you know, kind of me working with Larry and stuff like that, just because he's, uh, you know, like I said, he was in Dubai for so long. But um, yeah, I think sometimes people, um, you know, get so maybe caught up with, uh, you know, just kind of searching for things online and stuff, and they don't always kind of realize. Some sometimes I think you know now, um, powerlifting gyms are a lot more accessible. There's more options. There's more gyms. Even like the commercial gyms have more platforms. They have more racks and things like that. So I do think like kind of strength training is a lot more accessible than at least when it was when I started. I know um, even kind of my first introduction to like lifting, um, you know, like our high school weight was very bare bones. It's kind of upgraded a lot since then. And I think that it's becoming, you know, just a little bit more mainstream, which, which is, which is good. So um, I definitely think that a lot of people, um, if you do a little bit, you know, extra, you know, little research and kind of, you know, shop around, I think there's definitely a lot more options within that are, you know, cl closer than most. I know I used to have to travel a lot just to, uh, to learn and get, and get good training in. But, uh, but anyways, so, uh, I know, so like, you know, in terms of, I don't want to speak for you, but I know like, you know, you, you kind of came in, you know, you did you kind of did a power lifting meet did well. I know you still have some kind of goals and like your squad and your deadlift that you want to kind of pursue further, you know, your upper body, I think has always been like a strong point. Um, I'm not sure if you ever, uh, if you did, uh, if we ever, I, th I think, you know, you probably like right around like a two times body weight bench, which is, you know, fantastic. 
And then I know like also um, you kind of mentioned about kind of doing the strict curl, which some people may not be kind of familiar with, but basically um, for those that are interested, we'll kind of, if you got to go to gaglionstrength.com, you could also check out strict curl nation as well as hundred percent raw, but essentially um, the strict curl is another kind of form of, it's kind of, I would say it's kind of like a, a, a you know, not, it's not quite powerlifting, but uh, you know, the, the curl actually used to be in, you know, the, it was an odd lift basically. So like before kind of powerlifting was kind of a mainstream uh, organized thing. Uh, they used to, you might do, do like a deadlift and curl meet or a bench and curl meet. And then eventually, you know um, you know, CT Fletcher is probably like the most notable. Yeah, definitely. Kind of, uh, that has kind of like, you know, he always had his uh, curl comp. I think his, I think they actually, he just hosted his uh, curl competition recently. I think it's usually like in May, he hosts like a meet. Um, and then I would say like around the time, you know, it might have had something to do with Larry, it might have been some other things, but I know like kind of over the last couple of years, kind of the strict curl has kind of had a little bit of a resurgence. I actually competed, didn't have a wall, but we had like a standing kind of power curl in the WNPF. And uh, basically like the curl would be after you were like, you would be done deadlifting. If people wanted to participate, that was kind of like a, like a side contest uh, in hundred percent raw had, had it with always with the wall and then the WNPF. Um, did kind of like a little bit like of a less strict version where it was just kind of like a standing curl, which I participated in. I had some uh, records for, you know, my, my uh, age group at the time. Um, and I believe like they changed the rules. So I think those records are kind of fr frozen now. So, uh, but the strict curl has kind of gained some popularity. So if you guys are kind of, but if maybe I just want to, you know, check out strict curl nation, check out hundred percent raw federation. If you guys are interested and that we're hosting also a meet in August. Again, uh, we'll continue to kind of host at least one one meet a year. I'm trying to also maybe get something down in Delaware. But maybe if you can kind of talk about, um, I guess, how you first like heard about it and then kind of what your experience has been. Like you've obviously done well for yourself, but I'll kind of let you talk. Like, I guess, what got you kind of interested in that and and maybe just to kind of talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so... So, so you want me to say uh, how I got interested? Yeah, in how you got into yeah. it and we can kind of talk about like how we're training, you know, that's because I know because that's the kind of thing I want to, you know, so for those that are like listening, you know, um, I want to say you took uh, fourth, fourth place at the Arnold. Yeah. So yeah, uh, by, by, uh, so by, it's formula. By, by formula. So at the Arnold, um, everything is kind of, I think they use Wilkes kind of like, so same as powerlifting. So it's you're going to take into account the weight you lift as well as body weight. So I think it was like out of maybe like 50, uh, total like lifters or so, um, you know, Ed took fourth overall, which is fantastic. So it was like at a national level meet at the Arnold. So um, very, very well, you know, just curl it, which sounds kind of crazy, you know, you curl in like over your body weight, uh, which for someone that's maybe like, you know, new to the gym, it sounds like in, in, in insanity. Um, but there are like a handful of people that are doing it uh, at, you know, at, at the highest level at a national level. So yeah, if you could maybe just talk about like kind of how you got into it or how you first heard about it. And then we'll kind of, you know, talk about a little bit like how we're cur currently training for it. And then if people are kind of interested, how they can kind of get involved. Because I do think like, again, this podcast is called Powerlifting for the People. And maybe not everyone could be uh, competitive um, at, or as competitive in the squat bench deadlift. Or maybe you have some sort of injury uh, that may maybe you have like a low back injury or something. I know you were, you were kind of dealing with a low back tweak yourself, but the curl is something that you could do um, maybe if your lower body is compromised or maybe you're just not as interested. Like I said, I loved squatting and deadlifting more, but I know not everyone, a lot of like, maybe if you're like a, just a normal gym rat or whatever, maybe this could be something where um, maybe if someone's not, they don't really have uh, interest in training their lower body that heavy, or they have like a lower back issue. Uh, I think the curl can be a great option for the, for those people. So anyways, you can kind of talk about how you kind of got into it and how you first like heard. Yeah. It. So back in high school, I remember vividly, there was just one day I was in the weight room and uh, this kid that was older than me, um, like a grade above me, was on the preacher curl machine. Not the machine, sorry, just like the regular, regular preacher bench, curl. Yeah. yeah, bench. And um, he had a, like a 15 pound dumbbell and he was like doing his curls like and struggling with it. I was thinking to myself, it's like only 15 pounds. It's not <laughs> that's not uh, that's not hard to do a 15 pound like curl. Like, OK. So like I waited till he was done and then I went and I tried and I couldn't do a single one. And I realized like, oh, because like 
like the preacher curl is like stabilizing it. It's, it's so yeah. much. Yeah, it's so much harder. And since then, like, I've always just like done a bunch of preacher curls, like as my like main staple of like bicep workouts. I've always done just been preacher curling, and I used to watch those like uh CT Fletcher videos, who you mentioned. Uh, he had videos like the OG videos were just him and a bunch of guys in the gym just curling and he would just be screaming, I command you to grow and things like that. And like just screaming at people, curl, curl, curl. And like those videos were so hype. And so like I would see that and then I would go to the gym with my boy and we would just, we would just hammer biceps and that just like after doing it for years, like I just, had stronger biceps than like most people my size I would say and and then um it, I didn't realize that strict curling was like an actual competitive thing until um I saw some of those videos on YouTube of um like those they're, those are little there are little channels that post videos like here and there I think it was like Nick strength and power used to yeah, talk he, about he was I, th I think him so I know like you know not I think it was like, um, I want to say during like, tw you know, 2020 ish. Um, so this was like right after like Larry um, broke the all time record for the 308 class. So that was um, so kind of like when things started to get shut down. And I know like um, a lot of people kind of like were trying to like do kind of find something to do and in here and there. And I know like Larry was kind of starting to do some strict curls and stuff. And I think Nick Strength and Power kind of might have did. Uh, kind of a piece on him and some other people. So I know like over the, like the last like three years um, and I think yeah, Nick strength and power was definitely in channel that because he actually wa uh, was a um, former uh, competitive curler himself. And I think he just really liked it and he, I know he loves bodybuilding. So kind of cool. So I think he started to kind of like kind of pick, he, he would like find these videos and kind of showcase some of these people, some of them that weren't even like meets yet and stuff, but, and then um, I'm not sure if, you know, just the timing went right or whatever, but, you know, strict curl nations kind of like an East coast organizations, you know, CT Fletcher. Cause I actually had, um, I don't know if I ever mentioned this to you or not, but I had kind of conversations with uh, some of the people that run CT Fletcher's meets, but just never kind of panned out. It just kind of like, Oh, we'll revisit next year or whatever. So we, we did a meet. Um, we, we did an unsanctioned meet. I'm not sure if you participated in that one or not, but we did one that was unsanctioned. And then the following year, um, we started, you know, you and John and some others, and we'll have John on here at some point. Um, it's get, starting to get like more organized, 100% raw is getting involved, like the judging, you know, they're trying to do like, you know, a tested division and untested division. And um, and then obviously like doing it at, you know, you compete at Mr. America and then most recently the Arnold, which was like your biggest meet and it was probably the biggest, um, you know, in terms of like a national level meet, that was the biggest one that I, that I was a part of. And you, you both, you and John, you know, uh, place top 10, which was fantastic. Um, so a couple of things I wanted to highlight though. So number one, I think a lot of people, um, can, uh, appreciate that if you're kind of new to training, like just because like it's, you see 15 pounds or you see whatever, depending on like the, the technique you're using or like kind of the, the machine or whatever, sometimes 15 pounds or whatever, it may seem like not a lot of load, not a lot of actual weight, but how you do it, like, again, putting your but your shoulders against the wall, it changes the game in terms of like what you, you can't really kind of cheat with your legs and stuff like that. So what you may be able to curl standing is not necessarily going to have a hundred percent correlation with what you could do strict against the wall. And I think that's kind of just a good thing to note with other exercises, how you perform them in a strict manner. Um, you could drastically kind of increase the challenge. So I think that was kind of something that you kind of learned kind of intuitively early on. You're like, oh, this doesn't seem like a lot, but then you get on the preacher curl and you can't cheat. Yeah. It changes the game. Uh, and then the other thing that I wanted to highlight too, I think, you know, a lot of people, um, like I used to get really motivated, you know, like I said, just kind of different time, whatever. I used to watch a lot of, uh, we had Westside Barbell v VHS tapes, which is kind of crazy because most people don't even have like a VCR like anymore and stuff, but that was kind of like, um, they were pretty like horrible. They weren't like great quality, whatever, but we kind of, that's kind of like we read powerlifting USA and we had like the Westside Barbell VHS tapes 
And that was kind of like the information we had. And, and then it was just kind of word of mouth, but watching kind of like the meat footage and watching kind of like, you know, one of the guys that really inspired me was Chuck Vogelpohl. And that's like, if you ever seen that he's on in our gym, we, uh, in front of the red monolith, but he was the uh -huh. first man to squat a thousand pounds at 220 class. And he was very intense. So I think like, um, that is something that I know, like when we have our, and you could speak to that a little bit, but like when we have kind of like our max effort sessions and you actually have kind of people around you, uh, you know, whether it's cheering you on or cueing you, whatever it is, I think definitely like that can ramp up the intensity quite a bit. And you don't always get that if you're training alone. So I don't know if you want to speak to that a little bit or talk about yeah. the difference between like training. Cause I think that the, a lot of people don't understand like, um, or like they like, Oh, like why is your gym like only certain hours or like, cause I think like having that team setting, especially when you have a couple of training people that you regularly train with can make a big difference. Uh, and especially if you do want to compete at some point, I think it is good to like have be in that environment, which is a little bit more competitive. You have like kind of eyes on you. So if maybe you can kind of talk yeah, about that a little bit. Yeah. It's definitely more motivating to uh, lift with some of the guys from the gym. So when we're in our class, like classes and like we have a couple people in per session and we're all like cheering each other on and like motivating each other. And like, we're, especially on those top sets, to help like get in the right mindset when everyone's like yelling, like you got this push, whatever uh, that definitely helps a lot. And, and it's also motivating to see like your peers around you make progress. Yeah. So when, when they make progress, like that motivates you, you got to like also make progress, you know, it's a, like little friendly rivalries and like competitiveness and stuff like that. It's all, it's also like pretty motivating. So yeah, that's one of the advantages of of the gym, I guess. Here, so at at the commercial gym, like at most, like you're working out the like one or two gym partners. So, but like, it in at 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 our gym, there's just so many like people around, and they're all making progress, and they're all motivating, and it's pretty awesome. Yeah. And I think like everyone's kind of like trying to do the same thing. And I think that's kind of motivating. So they take it seriously. And um, so I think that that's huge. Um, and especially when you get to, you know, the point where it may not matter as much maybe for like the curls and stuff. I think even, even that still like, you know, what you and John are kind of, you know, been climbing the ranks and I think that's, you know, kind of seeing each other progress, I think is helpful. And also like uh, we had some, kind of friendly rivalries with some of the guys like, you know, you got like guy in your weight class, you know, Gary Teeter has been doing it a really long time. And um, even though you guys are kind of going against each other, you're also like try you know, you want to see each other do well and you guys are kind of pushing each other up and, you know, and someone like, you know, Gary's been doing this a long time. So we, you know, we're kind of relatively, I've been involved with powerlifting since 2006, but, and I, I dabbled a little bit in the curls myself, but I never did uh, the strict curl with the, with the wall. Um, so it's kind of exciting for me as a coach too, because it's like, it's still like related to powerlifting, but it's still like a new, uh, kind of venture that we're kind of figuring out like the program and we're figuring out other things. So, um, yeah. Maybe, and if you want to kind of expand on that a little bit and yeah, I think, um, one thing that I will say is that most of the other competitors didn't have coaches. And that was like one competitive advantage that me and John had especially like if you remember the warm up area in, uh, in the auto uh yeah uh in, in the chaos of things people were like were making, making a little mistakes long. or warming up they may have been warming up too heavy they might not even known yeah. what weights they were doing cuz it was in kilos so yeah i think being prepared and having like a handler is huge which again in powerlifting is becoming more popular so it's kind of like and you still see it i mean i, I don't think you've been to as many um powerlifting meets obviously as i have but we still see it like we'll go to a meet we, we end up end up helping like people outside our gym a lot of times because a lot of people will kind of go in blind um they don't know what the bars weigh they don't know like if maybe maybe it's in kilos maybe it's in pounds and they're not they're you know maybe they're not timing the warm-ups right yes yeah, so i think that was a huge advantage and i know like um i know specific i can't for, for you, you did ex exceptionally well too so obviously you and john both needed to uh, hit your third attempts to kind of secure like your placing. And if John didn't get his third attempt, he would have been out of the running. He wouldn't have got, you know, a top 10 finish. And 
uh, he beat out a couple of guys that were more seasoned because he got, got all of his attempts. So some of those bigger guys that, um, you know, yeah. curl, you know, curled like, you know, in excess of 200 pounds, they only got, maybe they only got the rope or whatever. So I think that you yeah, having a good strategy and kind of like having someone call your attempts, that's kind of unbiased and they kind of take their emotion out of it. So that's whether it's the strict curl or powerlifting, I think, you know, having a handler and having someone that you trust call your numbers. Um, also like I'm watching what the other fields doing. So I was kind of like watching the people in your weight class. I was watching some of the bigger guys, um, you know, and then there was a couple of, you know, like I said, not that you want, you, you never want to really hope someone misses, but sometimes, you know, you kind of take advantage if someone does miss and you can kind of capitalize on that and then you can kind of jump ahead. And then especially in the case of, um, you know, the strict curl, uh, you're allowed to take a half kilo jump. So you can get very, you can, the jockeying of attempts can get very, you could literally beat someone out by like, you know, like a one or one or two pound lift, which makes things quite interesting if you have people with like a similar strength level and then if someone you know makes a mistake or they miss a command or the foot slips or whatever the case may be and i know a lot of people were even having trouble even with the rack and stuff so sometimes if they're not used to the equipment that could that could be a factor so yeah having somebody uh kind of help you in the warm-up room is 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 key um and it just allows you to focus on just executing you don't have to worry about the logistics you don't have to worry about the timing of things um, so I think that's something if you do want to compete at some point, you know, having an experienced handler, um, or at least somebody there to kind of help you like load weights and kind of help with your warm ups. have, have a plan written out ahead of time. I think all those are kind of, and then, you know, I have like an idea of like, I know, like, you know, you know, both you and John, maybe like, you know, uh, going into the meet, maybe you wanted to do like a little bit more, but you guys both went three for three, you had great finishes. And honestly, like I said, the people that were ahead of you are some of the you know, best of all time and been doing it a really long time. So the fact that you guys uh, both had, you know, finished as high as you did was, I thought really fantastic. And, you know, it's just kind of exciting to see um, how the sport will kind of grow. Um, anything else that you kind of want to add about, like, you know, as far as, you know, we, we've been talking a lot about the Arnold, but as far as maybe some things that you've learned personally from like your first meet, um, you did Mr. America and then kind of going into the Arnold, some things that maybe um, you kind of learned along the way or any kind of, you know, mem memorable moments for, from the last couple of competitions. Yeah, uh, definitely memorable moments is just like being up on stage at the Arnold. Yeah, that's that was uh, that was something else that was I wouldn't have like imagined that like like a year ago that that was something I would get to do. So that is uh, definitely extremely memorable moment for me. That's something I'm always going to remember. And I'm grateful that I probably wouldn't like have even like competed at the Arnold unless I came to this gym personally. Okay. Uh, I, I didn't even know about strict call nation until I came to, to this gym. It, like you guys told me about it. So uh, I never really like planned on competing that much, but, um, yeah. So now, now that I'm doing that and, and I, I got to have that experience, that's definitely something that I'm really, really proud of. And I'm, and I want to keep doing, um, sorry, what was the first part of the question? No, I think that, I think that's well said, but it's just kind of any memorable moments. And so, so I think that's so like, cause I think sometimes people like, um, maybe if you can kind of explain like, cause you know, you could hit that same weight at the gym. Right. So like yeah. for, people, for people that like haven't competed before, like what would you say is the difference between actually doing it on the stage? Um, oh, there's you, a... you know, like it's just, cause I, some people may not like, cause I, cause I'd say like nowadays, like it, it could be a little cloudy. Cause with, um, you know, for me, like social media outside, there's a, there was a couple of people on YouTube. I never really competed for, um, you know, I never really competed for, um, for like for views and stuff until like when I opened up my, my business, obviously I was trying to just kind of showcase and represent our brand. But anyways, so you can kind of just go through. Yeah. And so talk about yeah, that competing and... is a whole different ballgame because there are judges, I guess, to tell you whether like it counts or not. And in the gym, like if I hit something in the gym, I'm like, oh, I hit it, but I may have not paused. I may have like in the in the competition there it might not uh like count 
for a various amount of reasons. And um, so it's like, it's, it's, it's different when you have to lift to someone like the standards of, of rules that a competition has. And um, it's not just me, but like a lot of people, I feel like they say they, they lift X or Y and then you watch the video and it's not up to the standard of like a competition. So, uh, it, so it, it is, it is really different. Um, you have to be more mindful and you can't just take a bunch of P workout and go crazy and just like, and just, uh, just assume that whatever you do counts and yeah. Yeah. And I, the other thing I'll say too, like when it comes to like, sometimes you have a good day at the gym, sometimes you don't, when, when it's meet day, like you have to like perform on like that day. And I think that kind of, you have to like practice some patience. You have to be disciplined. You have to focus on peaking. Whereas sometimes, you know, most of the time on Instagram and stuff, you'll see like the highlights. I try to showcase some things that maybe are go wrong or if I have a, an off week or whatever, but I would say for the most part, what we see is like the highlight reel of people. We don't see like the bad days we don't see. And then when it comes to a competition, you got to do it on that day. Um, yeah. And like you, like you mentioned before, like the warm up room was a little crazy. It was like a little chaotic. You can't like, pick and choose like when you're you have to be ready at a certain time if you don't you're going to get timed out um so there's a little bit more pressure involved and i think it's a lot more meaningful and like i said for for you i know like for me too like some of my most memorable competitions were also at the arnold uh and that was something that took me a really long time and then for those that are not aware but essentially you have to hit an elite total uh to compete at the arnold or like depending on what federation and then strict curl nation also has like a standard um, so you need to hit an elite level curl just to qualify. So you need to like be at a certain strength level uh, in a sanctioned competition, even to get the chance to compete at that level of a contest. So that's a big accomplishment, just getting there in itself. Um, and I think that, you know, just kind of going back to what you said before, um, I think it's important for people just to like kind of give, whether it be powerlifting, whether it be curls for some other people, like not me personally, but for someone else could be strongman or CrossFit or, or running. Um, if something kind of interests you, I would say just like try it and then tra train for a competition. So like you would have never have known, you know, and like I said, like obviously you've excelled really well. So you found like you have your training, like kind of led you to this point. And then with the coaching and, you know, you're kind of the opportunity presented itself, but you would have never have known that you could achieve this level of success without kind of doing the first one. So that's why I always kind of invite people to try it, see where, where you're at um, and kind of get around people that have kind of been there and done that. So then because someone like myself, I can kind of recognize, okay, I see potential in Ed to do this. Um, so, you know, why not, you know, give it a, give it a try. Um, but you would never, you know, like I said, we, we don't know, you don't know until like you kind of do that first kind of prep and then kind of see, and then you can kind of take it and run with it. And I think that you've done a great job of that. Um, and I think for a lot of people, again, that maybe they, if they don't have success in one area of lifting, this could be like another avenue that I hopefully want to kind of just showcase a little bit more. Um, it's definitely not as the, the, the talent pool is not as deep as powerlifting by any means, but it is getting more and more competitive. You're, we're seeing a lot more body weight curls. We're seeing more women getting around like a hundred pounds, which is pretty, pretty impressive. Um, you know, so we're seeing more 200 pound curls from the big guys. So I, I do see that it's increasing in popularity in the talent pool. It's only going to get, you know, more challenging as we kind of go. Um, but it definitely is like a good route. I think that people can, can take, and if people are in the Northeast area, you know, we have our August of arms competition. Um, it's on our website, gaglionstrength.com. But if you have, uh, maybe if, whether it be powerlifting or strict curl, maybe someone was on the fence or maybe they're just starting out. Like, do you have any advice? that you would kind of give to like new lifters that may, or maybe the mistakes that you've made that you can kind of, um, you know, just to kind of help people get started. Yeah. Uh, my advice is just to, uh, not think about it and just jump right into it. Uh, get a coach obviously, because my mistakes usually have been with form, I think. So having a coach help fix form and things like that would be uh, pretty helpful and help stay safe. Um, and yeah, so yeah, just like the Nike slogan, just do it, you know? 
Yeah, I think if you're kind of on the fence, I think I agree, just kind of jumping in, finding a contest. Again, you could check out Strict Curl Nation. You could check out 100% Raw. Um, we have our contest in August. If you guys, you know, want to, you know, DM me or, uh, you know, check out gaggleonstrength.com. Our powerlifting events are on Revolution Powerlifting website, but our Strict Curl events will be on Strict Curl Nation as well as our website. Um, but yeah, we're just, you know, we want to just get more people involved in strength training. And I think this is a good avenue. So I think, you know, Ed's a good example, you know, like if you saw like you're not a huge guy by any means, but you're doing pretty like, you know, amazing feats for your size. So you don't have to be like a certain weight. There's different weight classes. You could be a man, a woman, big guy, small guy, medium guy. Um, there's categories and for everybody. So maybe if powerlifting wasn't your thing, maybe stretch curl could be a good avenue for you. So kind of check that out. So uh, any other, I guess, uh, final words for the audience before we uh, close out? Uh, no. <laughs> right. Well, I appreciate you coming on. So let's, you know, you. one uh, that's kind of listening, you know, just uh, wish Ed luck in his next uh, contest. We got some kind of exciting to see like what he could do in the future for with Strict Curl Nation. Thank you guys so much for listening. And until next time, stay strong and we'll see you soon.